Man, it's tuned into them little dirt cooler that like the all of the old block guys over there, like man's proper tuned into them, you get it? It's like man see the comparison. You get it like how they live and like, how the man them live and that and yeah man. It's like King Von was one of the main guys I wanted to make a song with. Funny enough, like been like a couple of weeks before he we passed. My manager's page be like, oh, would you make a song with King Von and that? Like, I'm like, yeah, that's my guy. Like, he's like, we'll try and make it happen. And like, he sadly passed away. Man, that's heartbreaking. Just to imagine, like, you on a tune with Von would have just been the craziest yeah, thing ever. Yeah, that would have been crazy. It's just the, the OFB O-Block link-up would just yeah. be legendary. That would have been mad, 100%. Like, they all just come back and I'm better than ever And this time I'm popping off and then whenever the weather Straight when it's all L's, just me and my brothers Off beef, I'm block, go get us Come to the block, get yeah. Run down, yeah. sun's out, yeah. guns out yeah. T got in, now you gotta run now yeah. No Jumper UK, it's your boy Traplaw Ross On a very British rainy day And we are here at the Broadwater Farm Estate The infamous block that is most known for the likes of OFB. We're talking artists like Heady One, Band OK, a lot of Tottenham-based artists have come from this estate, but most importantly, Abracadabra. Mr. Spin This Coop, Mr. Jiggy Jiggy Friggy Friggy on deck. We are here today to have a chat with him before he releases his big mixtape, Product of My Environment. So we're gonna go have a little chat with him. We're gonna have a look around the estate and hopefully head to the studio a bit later and hear some new music. I'm gassed, no jumper UK, let's go. All right, so we're here just outside Tanmere. Sorry, ta yeah, Tanjmere. Tanjmere. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna mess it up, man. All right, we're here just outside Tanjmere with Abracadabra. Mm -hmm. This is this is your spot, man. Like we were just saying that that kind of you guys in a way have made this block famous, mm -hmm. and this this block has kind of made you who you are in a way. Like, Definitely. can you just tell us a little bit about like your experiences coming from here and just what it's been like coming up? Is that as uh, it's just it's it's more of a community type of feeling. It's not like just any other area. Yeah, like, you all know the majority of the people here. Uh, yeah, man, just growing up, I'd always come to this estate. Just one of my auntie's shops right there, and that. Uh, I'll come and visit my cousins and that. Uh, and then, yeah, man, this is just, it was, like, it was like a way of, man, I don't know, it was the next home for man, in it, separately from man's actual home. But yeah, man, it just brought us and that. Uh, uh, depend, like, uh, in terms of our morals and that uh, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, man, this place really shaped, man. And you obviously like, you know, the people that you're kind of blowing up with now and, yeah. and getting money with now are obviously like your friends that you yeah, knew growing yeah, up in the estate. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's a mad feeling knowing that we're not meeting and that. Uh, it's not nobody knew that we're around and that. Uh, and it's like, this was semi the man name's dream from before I was rapping. You get it? Like, Heady was rapping from back in the day, you get it? And my brother Bleaty, Cash, like, the man them had dreams of music from early, from as early as 2011, 2010 and that. So yeah man, just to now finally be like, have our foots in the door and that, like it's mad store. It's a mad feeling. It felt like, uh, you know, you, you might see this a little bit differently, right? But if, at least in some of the fans' eyes, it felt like Robbery was this huge tune. Look, man don't talk, man rap. Run up in a trap like, wow, so the money there, pulled up and yeah. And you know, you did a lot of other things that were super popular, your black box freestyle, things like that. Mm. But it felt like, at least for a period, maybe you weren't as focused on music as you once were. Yeah, yeah. What was the reason for that? I, just, I don't know, man. Every, I think everyone goes through that period. I remember, I come around a time when I was still young. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man's still surrounded by whatever. And man's, man's, man was trying to get away at the same time and that, but it's like, I don't know, man. My head just wasn't there, man. Literally, my head just wasn't on the music and that. I never wasn't focused on that. Things happen out there and that. And you go through times where you'll be stressed, you don't know you're stressed. You get what I'm saying? Mm. It was like all of that happened, that like, my creative thinking wasn't there. Like, I just went with it, man. I just went with it and that. And it's like, one thing that didn't help me is because I'm still making an income. So it's like, that weren't kicking me in the head and saying, like, mm. you got to get up now and do something magic, you know what I'm saying? So I wasn't realising that, that, I was just doing whatever I was doing. Yeah, I feel like there's, there's so much of this this sort of mourning from, from fans 
mm. for the loss of like SJ, considering mm. how talented he was coming from this space. Did, did that really feel like a big loss to, to you guys being from this area and him being Definitely. kind of one of you guys? Definitely, it was one of the maddest losses of him, Wookie. Like, it was mad losses to us. It's, it's one of them ones where like, S, I was fully, to SJ in particular, I was fully on him. I used to be on him constantly, like, bro, you ain't going nowhere, bro. You're coming to the studio, man, or we're going to shoot this video. You get it? I'm waking up early in the morning, 8 a.m., picking him up. Yo, we're going, you get it, bro? You see, when that, that, that nonsense happened there, it's like, it burnt, man. But at the same time, it's like, the reason why it burnt, man, more is because we all know the circumstances of one foot in, one foot out. You get it? So it's like, we know what we're trying to leave in that, and it's like, it's like it can come at any time. But when you're just saying it, it's like you're just saying in it until it actually happens, bro. And then, yeah, literally, it just came at any time. I and mean, it was just a mad blow, man. It burnt, man, in that. But we still chatting that it's good. You get what I'm saying, bro? We still keep it strong. Carter S is a strong boy, bro. A lot of people compare you to Pop Smoke, mainly because of your voice. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that, that you like? Do you think that's something that's helpful to at least help people just, like, understand? Or do you, do you prefer to just allow the comparisons? I, I, to be honest, you see me, I'm not a person with a big ego, like, things like that don't bother me, like, to be called the king or something, or, you know what I'm saying? As long as I can make an income and feed my peoples, and I'm not bothered, like, Pop Smoke, I actually genuinely was a fan of him. And it's like, the more people such sent, it's like, you know, they could tell you, oh, you look like someone, and then you say, no, I don't, you get it? But it's like, when they sent me the guy's music, and I actually started listening to him, I'm listening to his voice, I'm saying, oh, like, actually sounds like man, but I sound like him, and that, you get what I'm saying? I could see the comparison and that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it and that rest in peace pops more like he's someone that I hold highly like in terms of like like my musical standards and that like people I rate in the music and that like I fully rate this too. It's heartbreaking that we, we're not gonna get to see like a, a apps pop smoke link up because mm. that would just I don't know yeah, man. That would have been crazy stuff. The yeah. internet would just fall apart man. Would people would lose their mind. The fans love your voice. Yeah. And your voice is sick. It's crazy. No. It's it's just like when when you hear an abs tune and yeah. you hear that voice come through, it just hits differently. Yeah. I just really wanted to ask you, bro. Like when you were a kid, was your voice always this deep? Like when did it happen? <laughs> no, my voice wasn't this deep. I remember my voice got deep when I was like like seventeen, something like seventeen, eighteen or something. Do you know? Is I didn't really notice that my voice was as deep as they were saying until they started saying, you get it? Yeah. Like I wasn't a person that just thought, oh, my, my voice is mad deep. I never really used to think about, like in terms of music, like having a, a, a certain type of voice wasn't something that stuck to me, you know what I'm saying? I didn't think hard to, like having a good voice is a key factor in how good your music is and that. Like, it's like, it's only when I started seeing like a lot of the females and like, talking about it and I was thinking, oh, like, so they're mad and that, and I started seeing more than I started finding out that, like, Girls like guys with deeper voices and all of that. I was thinking, oh, that's mad, I didn't even know none of that. But yeah, it's that like 17, 18 or something. That's when I think my voice broke. <laughs> i tell you what, that leads me to one other All right, guys, so we're actually just having a little walk around the farm blocks. Uh, and I just want to tell you a little bit about the history here. So um, the area has actually got quite a steeped history when it comes to police brutality. Um, in 1985, not far from here where the Tangmere House Estate is, we actually saw the murder of a police officer, PC Blakelock, um, with that coming after the kind of questionable death of a local resident after a police search of their house. Um, it was that actually incident that resulted in days of rioting, um, an unfortunate situation which was actually repeated around 2011 when we saw the tragic killing of Mark Duggan at the hands of police officers in the local area. Um, that led to days of rioting and a serious situation that ended up being replicated in various different boroughs in London around those times. Um, and it was actually Mark Duggan's son uh, who grew up to become the drill rapper Band OK, who you might actually know now from OFB. So we're going to keep having a little, little look around the farm blocks and going to go and have a catch up with Abs at the studio, see what he's doing and hear some of the music he's working on. So stay tuned for that. I put my life on the line for this thing Cause my broski's life was funny So I got him Think he's poor Mickey that's like Sonny This ain't no cartoon thing like Well he's in drum If I bang this way Make him run fast We can run so fast When he stops running fast He go turn him for me Tell me you might have fuck If you're on it You could have shot 20 men last year If I hit you in your chest You pussy you're dropping Besides Joseph doing good 
All right, guys, so fresh off our tour of Broadwater Farm, we're now in the studio with Ab. So he's just in there working on a bit of music. Hopefully we'll get a minute so that we can catch up with him, maybe hear some of the new tracks off of his new project, Product of My Environment, and as well, hear a little bit more about the music video that he literally just dropped a few hours ago, Trenches, which is already doing numbers on YouTube. So let's get in there and maybe have a word with him. How does that feel, man, just being like a few hours off of a big release, you know people are out there just loving your tunes and you're, you're in here, like what, what goes through your head? I, I don't know, you know, bro. I'm already <laughs> thinking about the next step, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, like, I think I'd more, when I go home and I'm on my own, you get it? That's when I'd think about that. Like, rah, so mm -hmm. you really rate this tune and then I'll go watch the views or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, well, that's the last I'm in the moment and I don't dwell on it too tough and that, like, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do after. Because like, yeah. I feel like there's always kind of like two camps when it comes to rap, sort of the guys that will just sit down and do everything really meticulously written and mm. others that will just get in there, vibe and just come up kind of line by line or bar by bar. What do you yeah. prefer? I used to write, but it didn't work out for me. You get it? I'm better off doing it from the top of my head. If I write and write, it's like I, f I'm, uh, I think about it too much. And I don't, I don't really like, it. yeah, man. It's a bit. But when I say it off the top of my head, I'm more saying my truth. Whereas, if I'm writing it now, I might think, oh, this is a bit too crazy to say that. I might not say it. But yeah. Do you feel like sometimes if you go on the writing side, you can get like a bit too deep, and it gets to the point where people aren't really like able to connect with what you're saying on an emotional level? Well, you can connect. You get it. The sadder it gets, the better it gets. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's just, it's just about. What I, I deem appropriate to put out in it. It's as funny as it sounds, and there's sometimes certain lyrics in there I think, oh no, I'm not going to say that. It'd yeah. be outrageous to get it, bro. For sure. Yeah. Well, like, clearly, you're, you know, you're already doing well for yourself. I mean, I've been getting blinded by your watch today. <laughs> so it's been crazy, bro. But um, I, I was really curious to ask you, obviously, you know, what with your success and, you know, the, the streams and the income that comes in, what are the kind of things, you know, apart from obviously a bit of drift here and there, <laughs> like what are the things that you've done with, with the money that's kind of like improved your life or your families or the people around you? Like, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. Uh, see, I look after some of my peoples and my jailers and that. You get it? That's coming out soon. I send a lot of money back home in Ghana. Yeah, it's less fortunate over there, so it's like, Ten pound over there, over there, it's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? So I send a lot of money back home and that. Um, Cause yeah, man, just family really and truly, but I don't. I'm not a, a mad spender like that. I can buy like jewels and that once in a while on trip and that. that one. To be honest, even the drip thing, I wouldn't really be spending money on drip like that if it wasn't for like video shoots and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? I only basically buy drip when I got video shoots and that. Or say like the man them just feeling lively today when I go out shopping and I might follow them and spend a little cash on that. But yeah, man. Other than that, man, I'm not really a like a, a mad spender like that. Yeah. That's, that's sensible, man. That's good to hear because I feel like some people can go down that wrong path of just like blowing their bag too soon before they've even got like a solid yeah. foundation, you know? Yeah, no, man, it's not with that. I ain't. Remember, it's like I only I would only like to like spend money if I need to. What I was in, One thing I wanted to ask you, man, is uh, you did an interview with Tim Westwood, and yeah. he, he asked you if you were kind of up in the clubs, and you kind of said that you weren't really a club dude, but sometimes yeah. you're in the in the yardy raves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask you, bro, what's a yardy rave like? Yardy raves is like, it's not, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know nothing about, about a yardy raves. So. They're, like, they're like, they're like raves here yeah, that's mainly focused on like Caribbean culture. Mm. Yeah, obviously. Police don't necessarily like them, and you get it. But that's why I feel more at home compared to being in like I don't know the famous clubs and that spending my own bread on bottles and that. I go there a couple of two white rum and that, and I'm good. And it's like I can be myself. No one's on to me for pictures, and I barely get it anyway. You get what I'm saying? They all know, man. So it's like they're barely on to me. I could just. Be myself, and I don't have to worry yeah. about nothing. Has that, that ever led to any like mad or like weird situations, or just like misunderstandings where someone's kind of like a fan's like pulled up on you, and you've kind of like reacted the wrong way or something? Yeah, there's a there's basically there's a time there. I was wearing something what I should I wasn't supposed to be wearing because of a certain deal that I had. Right. I get it. So then there's a but 
I think this was this was just unruly of me. This was when I was growing up, and I was like nineteen these times and that. But if you don't, if you're not supposed to wear this, then don't wear it, and no one's gonna take a picture of you. You're a rapper, obviously they're gonna pick a video you and that. But obviously me being young, reckless and that, like the youths constantly trying to take videos of me. I'm walking through the crowd. I'm saying to him, brother, you're not supposed to be wearing this. Allow it, fam. Don't video me. Get it. Constantly, constantly doing it, but that day I was, I don't know what annoyed me that day. I was annoyed the whole day, bro. So, I don't remember when I've grabbed the phone off him yet and I've just threw it into the crowd, basically. You get it, like, but it's a mad crowd. Remember, man's at a show and that. I've just taken the phone and, that, and dashed it in the crowd and that. Like, I've just carried on walking. I don't even remember what happened in that. When I, as, not even when I got home, bro, as I got older, I looked back at that, like, two years later. I said, shit, I shouldn't have done that, you know. That was a bit silly, like. Because it's, like, it's just a fun, isn't it? Like, but I don't know, man. You live and you learn, innit? Fuck it, man. Sorry, bro. It's hard to imagine because you're such a calm guy. Like, I, c- I couldn't even imagine you being pissed off. I'm sure yeah, it happens. Yeah, but... I was just annoyed that day. I don't know what got me <laughs> mad, bro. But I just remember I was, I was telling this guy to stop. He's not listening. I'm saying, bro, it's either this or I'll punch in your mouth, bro. I just threw the phone that. That's the better option. Yeah, bro. That's the better option. Like, in America, I know they think, like, London, the UK is, like, just London, eh? Central London and that. You know what I'm saying? But man's going through the same things they go through, you get it, bro? Yeah. For sure, bro. Well, listen, I appreciate that. you got so much going on. Super excited for your project. Super oh, excited yeah. for all the OFB stuff. Um, I just yeah. want to say thank you for having, having me and, like, for real, you're an inspiration to these young guys that are going through difficult situations and, and maybe don't necessarily realise that there's like another way or yeah. there's a way to improve things. So, yeah, you know, keep doing your thing, keep shining and, and keep being an inspiration for those ones, bro. And I, I just want to say like, appreciate it. Definitely. Nice one, bro. That, bro. No Jumper UK. Okay. All right, so we are finished for the day. We are done at the studio. I survived my time on Broadwater Farm and we had a sick day with Abs. Honestly, big shout out to Abs for having us for the day. And I'm gonna go and jump in the ride, spin that coop and go home and listen to products of my environment that is dropping tonight. I am guest. Cheers, Abs. Cheers, No Jumper UK. It's Trap Law Ross and I'm out. <laughs>